Good day gentle people, it's your favorite Mr. 4A2. Or if you're new to the channel, I'm Mr. 4A2 and welcome. Today we're gonna do something different than usual. We're gonna talk about the Electric Universe. I want to welcome my latest patron, Wop Palmer. Thank you very much for your support. If you also want to support me, check the description for a link to Patreon or hit the join button. A few weeks ago I was searching on YouTube for royalty free music. After all, who wants to pay for stuff that you can get for free, legally, am I right? After checking out a few channels, I found one that had some really good tunes. I know there's now count for taste, but let's start some. Anyway, since the guy is making a few different genres, I was happy to find that he made playlists per category. That surely shortens my search, right? That was until my eye fell on a playlist called Electric Universe. I didn't think much of it at first. I mean, who knows what they call all these music styles these days. And this is what I found. I like watching people debate on YouTube. It's what I watch most often on this platform actually. And I like to hear lots of different topics debated. So you can imagine that I follow a lot of skeptic channels from Sargon of Akkad, Jimmy Dore, Thunderfoot, and also the Armored Skeptic. And last year, the Armored Skeptic put out a hilarious video called The Moon is Fake, I guess. I think we've all been there. We all have seen such videos. Which is a response to a channel named Spirit Science Central. Armored Skeptics video is a great exchange that features Spirit Science Central waxing spiritual and quasi-philosophical about different aspects of the moon. Disclaimer, Armored Skeptic did not bother to research this. He is pulling this out of his ass. And Armored Skeptic doing some sort of rebuttal, which wasn't really a debunking per se, but it peppered in some logical thought that challenged the ideas of the original video. Oh, oh here, read this part here. David Icke's research led him to shaman around the world. David Icke? Does anybody know who David Icke is? He's the guy that goes around saying that the world is ruled by reptiles. In all fairness to Spirit Sound Central though, their video didn't really try to ham fist their ideas as fact, but merely painted some possibilities as to what the moon is based on a few sources and a few things that they heard through various means. It sounds to me they took some lessons in YouTube University. The Moon is Fake, I guess, was posted on YouTube a year and a half ago. While the video is still just as funny as it was back then, things have changed since then. I'm not the guy that I was back then. I've learned new things and taken on a different perspective. Uh oh. I'm still learning things, and I don't have all the answers, and I can't answer all the questions posed by the Spirit Science video, but I can provide a plausible explanation for some of them, and I'm going to do that here in this video, so please hear me out. I'm really excited to get into this with you guys. Well, okay, let's see where he's going. So let's start with the exchange between the two right here. Well, craters should vary in depth due to the size and impact of the various space rocks that hit them, right? We can tell that there was a difference in the meteor sizes that hit the moon by the diameters of each crater. Yes, bigger rocks make bigger holes. How come all of them, across the board, are the same depth? Well, that's easy to answer. They aren't. Mother of God, an impenetrable shell. They are not, oh my God, they are not the same depth. They all have relatively the same amount of sediment in them though, and that is an interesting question. So the theory is that the moon has suffered an untold number of collisions from asteroids or meteors, and that is what caused the craters on its surface. The problem is that it doesn't matter how big in diameter the crater appears to be, they all appear to have similar depths to each other. Oh come on, I had high hopes for you. You can take any picture of the moon where the craters are visible to debunk this already. Scientists have been unable to explain why this is so. And now you're the one pulling it out of your ass. After all, you would think that the gigantic asteroid hitting the moon would have drilled a much deeper hole into the moon's surface than something smaller. Yes, that makes complete sense. And that's also reality. The debate about these craters also parallels the attempts to explain the existence of the moon itself. Mainstream science tries to explain both the craters on the moon and the existence of the moon on collisions. Two bodies collide together to produce the desired effect. That's the idea. Magrothea! 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 
Well, there you are, well, close enough. It's almost universally accepted as fact, yet the observed data doesn't seem to match what we think we know. It is the one theory that is best supported by the available data, so what are you talking about? Attempts to simulate the formation of the moon have not produced the results that the scientists expected. Citation needed. So what if the craters on the moon weren't caused by asteroid impacts at all? Well, my friend, this is where I step in and lead you down a rabbit hole I fell into six months ago. Are you ready for the ride? Good. Let's go! <laughs> oh shit! That was just the intro! So, my story begins like any other story, right? I'm sure. It's totally normal, right? I mean, I'm sitting on my computer watching UFO sighting videos on a binge seeing all the totally real and not faked UFOs and pictures that aren't photoshopped images superimposed on a shaker cam effect in Adobe After Effects. I just take he's being a little bit sarcastic here. All good. I mean, the narration is compelling for at least a little bit, right? It's completely normal, I swear. Normally, I binge on UFO videos for a couple of days before I come up for fresh air. And usually I leave unimpressed with all the fuzzy dots being presented as evidence of aliens and move on with my life for the next few years or so. But this time, I fell face first into a rabbit hole. Okay people, hold on to your heads. It started with this Secure Team 10 video about how Mars was in a war thousands of years ago, I guess. And we know that, likely, Mars was a planet just like Earth was. So picture Mars as another Earth, maybe a few million years ago, before it was devastated and destroyed by what, in my opinion, I believe was a nuclear war of some sort. Secure Team 10 cited a video in its narration and description as a source from Project Thunderbolts. I clicked on this video, expecting another UFO conspiracy theory video, but what I got was totally different. The video went through great lengths in its hour-length presentation to describe how Mars did indeed experience catastrophic events that left huge scars on its surface. Yeah, Mars went from hot and liquid to solid and pretty cold. Therefore it lost its atmosphere and most of its liquid water and it got a lot of bombardment by meteorites. That is gonna leave some scarring indeed. But nowhere did it state that aliens had done this. That was not what this video was about. In fact, the planetary scale on which Mars had experienced this sort of Armageddon of events made it clear to me before they even tried to explain it that this hypothetical advanced alien technology could not do something on this grand of scale. Whew, that's the bullet there. So I finished the Thunderbolts video and then I went on to the Project Thunderbolts channel for more videos. I listened to their ideas and contemplated their evidence, and now I'm so far down this rabbit hole that I can't ever come out again. And he's gone. I want you to come with me and step into a realm of better science and see for yourself whether you agree with me or not. Better science, you say? Well, if that's true, let's go there. Before we tackle the craters on the moon problem, I want to put out the basic ideas of the electric universe. So what is the Electric Universe? The Electric Universe is a collection of ideas that encompass many different aspects of life, ranging from cosmology to physics to biology and even mythology from the viewpoint of electrophysics. That sounds like a great recipe for word salad. First and foremost, in the Electric Universe, gravity is not the fundamental force that holds the universe together. Instead, as the name implies, the Electric Universe postulates that the fundamental force of the universe is the electric force. Well, that can be easily debunked. Objects do not float in a Faraday cage. The electric force is the force that holds electrons in orbit around protons to form atoms, molecules, and the basic building blocks that form the universe around us. That's how they draw in people, don't they? By using real science and then fucking it up. 
It's also the force that allows us to power the electrical features in our homes, cars, and computers, among a million other things. It's the force that produces the shock you feel in static electric discharge and the lightning bolts that you see in the rainstorms. How strong is the electric force compared to gravity? The electric force, on the other hand, is 1,000 billion, 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 billion times stronger. That's absolutely true, but it doesn't mean what you think it means. As you can see, the electric force is exponentially stronger than the gravitational force. It's even the force that is directly responsible for magnetic force. And many people involved with Electric Universe and Project Thunderbolts also think that the electric force is directly responsible for gravity. It's not. How is all this related to Craters of the Moon? Well, you can imagine with such a fundamental difference between classical cosmology and electric universe theory that the electric universe view of the solar system is much different than what we were taught in our schools. In this view, the sun is not a controlled nuclear bomb. There is no fusion reactor at the center of our star. Instead, it describes the sun as a node on a pinched electrical or plasma current filament or space wire. The heat generated by the sun is produced by electrical current flowing around the surface of the sun and not a fusion reactor at the center. The sun is outputting a lot of energy, so either it is depleting or it is getting its energy somewhere else. So where is it getting its energy from? This, by the way, is a simple explanation of why sunspots are dark rather than bright, because the center of the sun is cool in comparison to the surface. How is that an explanation? Incidentally, there's a related project called Project Sapphire that you should check out as well, where they use electric and plasma type experiments to recreate small sized suns in experimental chambers. I checked the Sapphire website and I found this sentence of particular interest. Sapphire is generating variations in electron density comparable to the photosphere, heliosphere and nuclear bombs. So we have these uh Anos we can throw out. And that was day two. That doesn't even look like the sun, as is proven by the next clip of this guy. And in any case, with this alternate viewpoint, our galaxies, planets, and stars are all electrically connected, and current flows between the sun and the planets through cosmic circuits. The aurora borealis is the result of the electrical connections between our sun and the earth through what is known as Birkeley currents. Solar wind, mate. Solar wind. I have here a plantarella, a modern day reproduction of an experiment that's actually over a hundred years old. The plantarella was originally designed by a Norwegian space physicist called Christian Birkeland, who in 1899 led an expedition to the top of an Arctic mountain to study the northern light. Now inside this vacuum chamber you've got a big ball here that represents the sun, and a small ball over there that represents the earth. And within this small ball we have this really strong magnet recreating the earth's magnetic field. The next thing we do is we put a voltage from the sun to the earth and so we're drawing electrons from the sun towards the earth. Now this recreates the solar wind of charged particles that is always flowing away from our sun and into interstellar space. See? Charged particles. It's even in your own video. When Venus was aligned with earth and the sun, scientists even observed electrical flow between Venus and our planet. Again, citation fucking needed. Uh, a few years back, uh, new scientists ran this article called uh, SOHO, that's the spacecraft, catches Venus by the tail. And the astronomers were puzzled, in fact they were surprised once again. They said the tail is made of stringy things. These stringy things are Birkeland currents. If they had any training at all in plasma uh, discharge phenomenon, they would have recognized it immediately. I have two things to say, and it's about your source. The first is Nexus magazine, in-depth articles on health, suppressed news, consciousness, ancient mysteries, future science, unexplained, free energy and much more, from a genuine alternative news and information magazine published worldwide for over 30 years. 
This is also known as hogwash. And the other one is UAM MTV. And I just showed this. Enough said. This is because Venus is charged with a massive electric field. If Venus and Earth were closer to each other, the electric current would be greater, even on a catastrophic scale. And you got that information from your most reliable sources, as they just pointed out. This brings us back to the craters on the moon, and as you may have guessed, the electrical universe states that these are the result of electrical machining due to electrical interactions between it and some other planetary body in our solar system. The features of the cratered surface of the moon are entirely consistent with electrical scarring produced by scientists in laboratories. Or by big rocks hitting the surface. It doesn't have to be so complicated, mate. The process of electrical machining can also be observed in our solar system right now. The recent landing of the ESA Rosetta probe on the Comet 67P turned up no ice as they expected to see. Instead, what they saw was the electrical machining of an asteroid surface through the electrical interaction between the sun and itself. <sighs> He's getting confused by charged particles again. What a guy. We can even see the electrical interactions between gas giants and their moons, just like we see on the planet Jupiter and its moon Io. Um, you gotta elaborate on that. The electric universe model is a concept of the universe much more realistic than the concepts put forth by Einstein and Kepler. Einstein's universe is based on mathematics first. And we are trying to correlate our observations through telescopes and measurements with what he came up with in the mathematics beforehand. Our survey said... Now you're just going straight on lying. That is not how science works and that is not what they're doing. The electric universe puts things as they should be by putting the observations first and then using the mathematics to describe them. Okay, cool. Please let us know where we can find some research papers. That's what Newton did back in the day when he came up with his laws of gravity, motion, force and energy. Right, so you're back to gravity now? The electric universe is a simpler concept and does not need additional mechanics to explain the shortcomings of gravity. Huh, just brushing over shortcomings now, are we? But let me give you some, like I did in the beginning. Put an object in a Faraday cage, removing all the electric currents and all the electric fields, and the object still falls down. Explain that one. There are no black holes. This is a somewhat older video, about five years. And it didn't age well. There is no such thing as dark matter, and time is not connected in any way to the universe as a fourth dimension. Oh boy, you're very wrong on multiple levels. But as a whole, the adoption of this new way of looking at our universe opens up an infinite set of possibilities. And I guess also a bunch of science-breaking explanations. And I invite you to take a look at the electric universe with me and see just how beautiful it can be. No thanks, I think I pass. And if you think that this is somewhat of a weird ending, that's because this is the first of his videos on the subject. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it enough to hit that like button. Hit subscribe as well if you're new here. And in the description you'll find more information. This has been Mr. 42, out. Don't panic.